stuff. I think we've had enough time to take that down now. So simplifying fractions, we're looking for the biggest number that divides into the top and the bottom. So any time that we are doing a question related to fractions, we want to simplify the answer because that gives us the most correct answer. And what I mean by that is if you get an answer and you don't simplify it, it doesn't mean you're wrong, but it means that there is a better answer we could get. So that's why we're going to use our simplifying. Um, so in our first example here, three over nine is the question. And I want us to simplify that. So if you can think, what's the biggest number that could divide into both three and nine? I want you to pop it into the chat now. So what's the biggest number that divides into three and nine? And I can see some people know the answer as well, but I won't go as far. I'm gonna, yeah, great stuff. The chat is flying with the answers. Super, super. So you can see there, a lot of people are putting in three. So that's what you're gonna divide both three and nine by three. And three divided by three is one, and nine divided by three is three. So our answer here is one over three. And I can see loads of people have said that. Super, super stuff. Great stuff. I have one more example, slightly harder. And then I'm going to let you do some questions, get you working. So we've got 15 over 50. This is trickier now. The last one, that was, you know, that was more straightforward. What's the biggest number that could divide into both 15 and 50? Great stuff. So the biggest number divides into both 15 and 50. Juliet has it. Great stuff. Aaron has it. Great stuff. Keen has it. Keen's got it in there four times. That's how much he has the right answer. Um, we have got Olwyn has it. Loads of people have it. Great stuff. The answer that we're the number we're going to divide by for this one is five. So we've got 15 divided by five, and we've got 50 divided by five. 15 divided by 5 is 3. 50 divided by 5 is 10. So our answer here is 3 over 10 is the simplified version of 15 over 50. So 3 over 10 is the simplified version. Okay, I have now got a question that I want you to do. So I've got here 15 over 20. And I want you to write down the answer for that and i've seen a lot of people so calculate it yourself and then put it into the chat and i see loads of people are doing it you use a little slash to show a fraction so you do if it's if i'm just going to write it here so it's like that that's the slash you put to show your answer so i'll give everybody a minute now to to calculate this one so Great stuff. The answers are flying in. So find out what's the biggest number that divides into both of them. And then you get your simplified answer. Loads of people answering in the chat. Super, super. Keep the answers going. Keep the answers going. And loads of people there have three over four as their answer. And to get three over four, what they had to do was they divided the top and the bottom by five. So 15 divided by 5 equals 3, and 20 divided by 5 equals 4. Super stuff, guys. The chat is hopping. That's great to see. Okay, I've got two more questions for you here. Oh, let me move this one over. Uh, so we've got question 2, 7 over 21, and question 3, 35 over 50. And I'm actually going to add one more. And it's going to be, let me see, we're going to do... 18 over 18 over 36, I think. 18 over 36 is question four. So when you're putting in your answer, just put in number two and then like a full stop and then say your answer, just so I know which one you're answering. So question two, question three, and question four. Great stuff. Dev's got it there. He's got the two full stop and then he's got a third. Super. Keep it going. Move on to the next one. Move on to three if you've got question two done.
Question four is a tricky one. And sometimes you mightn't get it fully simplified in one step. Sometimes you might need to do more than one step, and that's perfectly fine too. Great stuff, guys. Great stuff. Keep the answers coming. You're doing brilliant. Okay, so, and if you're feeling a bit stuck, what I want you to do is start off on question two and have a look at what's the biggest number that could divide into both seven and 21. So that's how I want you to start it. What's the biggest number that divides into seven and 21? So in question one, we had 15 and we had 20 and we divided it by five because five was the biggest number that went into both of them. So for question two, have a think about it. What's the biggest number that divides into seven and 21? And if you can't think about it, if you're not sure, maybe move on to the next one and come back to it. And as TJ just said there in the chat, there will be a recording going out of this lesson. So if you do want to have a look back later on and see why or where did this answer come from and you're not sure, and if you didn't feel like ans asking a question in the chat, um, we will send out the recording to you and you can have a look again. Okay, so I'm going to write up the answer for question two. And so we've got seven and we've got 21. And the biggest number that divides into both of those is seven. So seven divided by seven equals one. And 21 divided by seven equals three. So that is our answer for question. Um, so that's answer for question two. On to question three. Um, we've got 35 over 50. And I can see lots of people have put in the answer into the chat there. I can see the one I see right now, Roisin. And she said seven over 10. She was exactly right. Because, and see, Samantha just said it as well. Se uh, 35 over um, 50. And 35 over 50. So we're going to divide the top and the bottom by 5 this time. Um, so 35 divided by 5 equals 7. And then 50 divided by 5 equals 10. So the answer for question 3 is 7 over 10. Just give yourself a little tick if you got that one. And if you got question two as well, give yourself a little tick to show that you got that one right. And I'm just going to give another 30 seconds for people to finalize um, their answer for question four. Um, so we'll just give another 30 seconds for question four. So it's 18 over 36. And guys, don't be putting messages that aren't related to uh, maths into the chat. Uh, it has to be math only because otherwise people will get kicked out of the class if they're not um, putting in constructive messages. So we'll just recap if someone hasn't done it before. I saw someone said they had done it before. So what you're doing here is you're trying to break the fraction down to its smallest numbers. And the way you're doing that is you're dividing the top and the bottom of the fraction by the biggest possible number. So in question three, for example, you've got 35 and 50. You're going to divide them both by five. And then that will give your answer of seven over 10. So you're dividing them top and the bottom by the same number. And we'll move on to question four. So I can see lots of people there said it as a half. And it's interesting. You mightn't have seen the half straight away. So... You can actually divide 18 and 36. You can divide them both by 18. And that will give you an answer of a half. But that is hard to see immediately because you don't do 18 times tables in school. That's not really one of the tables you do. But you do do tables such as your sixes. So I could divide them both by six to break it down, to make it easier. So you can take more than one step to simplify. So if I divide 18 by six, the answer is three. And if I di di sorry, divide 36 by six, the answer will be six. And now you're looking at three over six. 
And that's a more manageable one. So if you divide it down again, you can divide three by three and six by three. Your answer will be one over two. And I can see lots of people there in the chat. They had answers that were just not fully simplified. And that's OK. So you might have divided by three at the start and you didn't finish it off right to the end. You might have divided by six at the start. You didn't finish it right to the end. So the key to simplifying is to break it down to the smallest possible number that you can. So that's what we're doing here. We're dividing by the biggest number that you can. And that's why that's the rule we took down at the start. It says find the biggest number that divides into the bottom and the top of the fraction. Um, so you might have divided by three first and then six. That's absolutely fine. OK, so uh, we'll just move on. And now we're looking at, so we're going to use the simplifying in a minute, but right now we're going to move to adding and subtracting fractions. So the first type we're looking at is when the denominators are the same. So when the denominators are the same, can anybody put into the chat what, the, what a denominator is? If you can remember what a denominator is, put it into the chat and let's see who remembers what a denominator is. Great stuff. I can see some people, Keen and Rebecca, they've got the right ideas. Juliet's got the right ideas. Erin, Erin's got it. Anna, Jason. Loads of people have the right idea. It's the bottom number of the fraction. And the that's what the denominator is. The bottom number of the fraction. So in my, in my first example here in the box where the chicken is doing his maths, you can see him here, he's working hard. Same as yourselves on his Easter holidays, he's working hard. And he notices that the denominator of this these fractions is 12. So the denominator is the same in all of these fractions right here. The bottom number is the same. The bottom number is the same. That's important. So when the bottom number is the same in our fractions, when the denominator is the same, you can add across the top. So what I mean by that is we've got 7 over 12, 4 over 12, and 5 over 12. And because the number on the bottom is the same, we can actually just add up 7 plus 4 plus 5, and that equals 16. So you can see here, the smart chicken has done exactly that, 16 over 12. So that means exactly, Erin, you just add right across the top when the denominator is the same. We'll look at ones where it's not the same, but when they are, you, when the denominator, the bottom number is the same, you just add straight across the top. And so, guys, make sure you don't uh, share over my screen as well. And just we'll keep it all on the max. Um, so the denominator is the same for all of these questions. Um, and let's have a look at another example that I've got for us here now before you have a few questions yourself. So we've got one over seven plus three over seven, plus two over seven. So the denominator is the same, it's seven for all of them, which means that I can add straight across the top. And if I add straight across the top, what would the answer be, guys? You can put it into the chat there now what you think the answer would be. If I add straight across the top. So I've got one, three, and two at the top. Super, I can see Annie, Kean, Daniel, there's so many people putting it in. Can't even see all the names, but loads of people have a six over seven. If you're wondering where did that six come from, that six came from you add one plus three plus two, and that equals six. So one plus three plus two equals six, and our answer is six over seven because the denominator, the number on the bottom, was the same. Okay based on how many people put the right answer into the chat there, I think you're good to have a go at this. these two questions here. So the first one has eight at the bottom. Eight is the denominator. And then the second one has 10 as the denominator. Great stuff, guys. Loads of people have the answers. And actually, someone just reminded me there in the chat with their answer. Remember to simplify your answer. I forgot to say that. So. I can see Jason had it. Someone else had it very quickly. Remember to simplify your answer. So when I say simplify your answer, we've already taken it down. I mean, 
find the biggest number that divides into the top and the bottom of the fraction. So you might get one answer and then you need to simplify it. Definitely for question. Yeah, for both of them, you can simplify your answer for both of them. So I'll give another minute there to finish off those. And I can see someone had a great question there. They were asking, what happens when the denominators are not the same? And we will cover that in a second. So we will have a look at that as well. But great question. Super. Okay, you can see loads of answers coming in there, which is brilliant. Okay, so the answer. Uh, oh, sorry, I'll move over to the side a bit more. Um, so guys, make sure that you're not sharing your screen. Uh, Emils, will you keep an eye on anybody sharing their screen? They might have to leave the class if that's continuing. Um, sorry, I know that someone's camera might be blocking off. So it's 5 over 10, 2 over 10, and 1 over 10. Apologies, I forgot. Everybody's cameras are in different places, so I always forget that they might be blocking the screen. Okay. Great stuff. So the first question, the first question, um, the first question there now, it says 1 over 8 plus 3 over 8 plus 2 over 8. So 1 plus 3 plus 2, and that equals 6. So that's the top. The bottom stays the same. So it's 6 over 8. So 6 over 8 is our answer. But as some clever clogs did in the chat, they simplified it because if you didn't, you might have noticed it the first time, you can divide the top and bottom by two. So that means that when we divide the top and the bottom by two, so we simplify it, that's that word we use, simplifying, it becomes three over four. Six divided by two equals three. Eight divided by two equals four. So if you haven't simplified your answer for question two, Give that a go there now. Um, so if you haven't answered your, if you haven't simplified your answer for question two, um, give it a go there now. Make sure you simplify it. Uh, Holly, I see your hands up there. If you can pop your message into the chat, Holly, just um, rather than unmuting, that would be super. Um, so if you do have any questions, pop them into the chat, guys, and hopefully if I get if I see them, I will answer them. So simplify your answer for question two if you haven't already. Okay, so um, let me see. So we've got two plus five plus one. So again, the maths in this is is pretty okay. The addition is pretty okay. We've got two plus five plus one, and that equals eight. And a final answer then is eight over ten. But we can simplify that, as a lot of you did there. I can see who's that answer. Can I see? I can see Emma's and Jeffrey's answer right now. Um, they simplified it. They divided the top and the bottom by two, and that equals four over five. So four over five is your answer there. That's your simplified answer. If you said eight over 10, you still have the right answer, but we're just trying to go to the best possible answer, the most correct answer. So that's why we simplify it. Okay, I just have two quick examples here. I'll let you do, I'll just give you, I'll give you a minute and a half to try these two. So it's the same thing for subtracting. You're just taking the top from the bottom, from, sorry, you're take, subtracting across the top. So in the example here, five minus two equals three over seven. So I'll just give you a minute and a half to do those two and you can pop them into the chat. Because we have more important ones to move on to now after this. Uh, 
Uh, Keen's asking there, will I be showing subtracting fractions with different denominators? Yeah, I will, Keen. Holly's asking, uh, you know how to simplify, but you're not sure why we need to. So simplifying in primary school is important, but in secondary school, it's absolutely vital. Um, because in secondary school, what will happen is you won't get all the marks for your question if you get it. You get it right, but they won't give you all the marks if you don't have it simplified. So, for example, um, if you're doing your, even from first year all the way up to sixth year, they won't give you all the marks if you don't simplify it. So that's why it's important to simplify. Great question. Um, okay, so we have loads of answers in the chat. Uh, super, super. And we've got 3 over 4 minus 1 over 4, and that equals 2 over 4. And we can simplify that, remember. You can simplify that because you could divide both the top and the bottom by 2. So your final answer would be a half. The second one, we've got 11 over 12 minus 9 over 12. So 11 minus 9 equals 2. So 2 over 12. And we can simplify that once again. You might have missed that one. That's a, that's a trickier one. You might have missed it. Um, you can simplify that. I can see there Laura didn't and Halima didn't. But you can simplify that to um, 1 over 6 because you can divide the top and the bottom by two. Super, super stuff. Okay, that's great stuff, guys. We will move on now to when the denominators are different. And for these questions, there are a few different ways to do them. So you might do them a different way in school than what I'm about to show them now. So don't worry if you do it a different way. That's the brilliant thing about maths. There are loads of different ways to do it and to do it correctly. But you do it whatever way you like to do it, whatever way you feel you're most likely to get the right answer. The way I'm going to show it today is that we are we need to get the same number at the bottom of these fractions. So we need to get the same number at the bottom of the fractions, or we need to have the same denominator. So that's important. We need to have the same denominator. And how we're going to do that is we are going to take the bottom of one fraction and multiply the other fraction by it. What I mean by that is we are going to take this 7 here and we're going to multiply the top and the bottom of the half by 7. So that will give us 7 multiplied by 1 is going to give us 7. And then 7 multiplied by 2 equals 14. And then we're going to do the same to the other side. We're going to do the same to the other side. So we're going to multiply this 2 here. And we're going to multiply the 2 by the 1 over 7. So it's going to look like this. We've got a 2. You're going to multiply it by 1 on top. And you're going to get the 2. And you multiply it by the 7 on the bottom. And that will equal 2 over 14. And then we've got... We've now got the same number at the bottom. We've got the common denominator, the same denominator. They both have 14, and that's the key. And at this point, you're doing the exact same as what we did for the last quest few questions. But now we have a common denominator. So we're going to do 7 over 14 plus 2 over 14. And I can see some people have said already 9 over 14 is our final answer there. So I'm going to repeat that again. We are going to multiply the bottom of one fraction by the opposite fraction. So in, I'll, I'll actually write up another example here just to make it very clear. So we've got 1 over 3 plus 1 over 9. And I'm going to take the 9 down here. And I'm going to multiply it by all of this fraction here, by the third. So we're going to have 9 multiplied by 1 on top of the fraction, and 9 multiplied by 3 at the bottom of the fraction, and that's going to give us 9 over 27. And then on the other side, we're going to take our 3, and we're going to multiply it by 1 over 9. So 3 multiplied by 1 on top, and then 3 multiplied by 9 on the bottom. And I'm not putting these numbers out of thin air. I'm using the bottom of the other fraction, the denominator from the other fraction. 
And that will give us 3 over 27. We're going to add these together. 9 over 27 plus 3 over 27 equals 12 over 27. Super. We can't simplify that one. There's no number. Oh, no, we can. We can. We could simplify it because we could divide top and bottom by three. I nearly missed it. And I can see there Rory got it. He saw it. Um, so he divided 12 by three um, and that equals four. And he equaled, uh, divided 27 by three and it equaled nine. So four over nine is our final answer. And there's some people that are still not sure. That's perfectly fine. So what I'm going to do now is everybody who feels happy to go with it, give that question a go now. So one over two plus one over six. In the meantime, anybody who's not feeling very sure yet, have a look at the screen and I'm going to show you how to do it. So um, you've got one over two plus two over six. And again, you might have done it a different way in school, but... This is just the way I'm going to show it now. So I'm going to take the bottom of the of the second fraction, the six. I'm going to multiply the top and the bottom. The brackets just mean multiplying as well, just in case you're wondering what the brackets mean. So we're going to multiply. Um, so we've got six multiplied by one equals six. And then six multiplied by two equals 12. And I can see the answer is flying in there. Anna, Amber, uh, Misha, great stuff. Um, so we've got 6 over 12, and that's our first fraction sorted. Now we need to do the same for the second one. So you've got 2 over 6, and we're going to multiply it by 2. And that 2 is coming from the bottom of the other fraction. So then we've got 2 by 2 equals 4. 6 by 2 equals 12. So 4. We've got 6 over 12 plus 4 over 12, which will equal 10 over 12. And I can see loads of people have already simplified, which is super. So you got 6 plus 4 equals 10. And we can simplify that by dividing the top and the bottom by 2. Uh, so that equals... Uh, 5 over 6. So 5 over 6 is the answer to that one. Uh, I don't have time to scroll up. Someone wants me to scroll up to have a look at the this part here. I don't have time to go through and uh, let everyone take that one down because we've got plenty of more questions to go. Um, so don't worry if you didn't see the last one. The main thing is that you understand this one. Um, so where did I get the 2 over 6? Good question, Holly. So the 2 over 6 came from, in the question here, this second fraction. So this second fraction is 2 over 6. So that's where I got it. And that's I'm multiplying it by 2 because there's a 2 at the bottom of the other fraction. Um, if you can simplify these answers, please do. Uh, please do. On to the next one. This one is subtracting. But you're doing the exact same. So you need to find the bottom of, you need to make the bottom of the fraction the same. So a common denominator. So the bottom of the fractions need to be the same. So give that one a go, and then I'll put up the answers. Or sorry, then I'll set right up the answers. And just remember to simplify if you can. And this is subtraction. I think I can see somebody did addition. So remember, this is subtraction. Very easy to straight away to do some uh, addition. You're in minds in addition. I remember before in school, I did some addition when I'd written down a subtraction sign and my teacher made me write out 10 times. Um, uh, they made me write out um, subtraction means take away and I'd write that out 10 times because I added instead by accident. Um, so it happens. Great stuff. Loads of David has it there. Great stuff. Kate has it. Super, super great stuff. Um, so um, I see there, uh, there was a question there, but why are we only taking away the top? So because the bottom is the same, it's just a rule with fractions. You can take away the top. So you don't, if the bottom is the same, you only need to take away the top. It's just, uh, it's just a rule with fractions. So we've got one over two minus three over eight. 
great stuff. iPhone there has it. Fair play to your iPhone. You're doing brilliant. But um, we've got one over two minus three over eight. So I've got one over two here. And I'm going to multiply it by eight. And I'm multiplying it by eight because that's at the bottom of the other fraction. So as I said, there are lots of other ways to do this. I just think this way is quite easy to explain, especially if you haven't seen it before. Um, the other ways there might require a bit more time. So you've got eight multiplied by one, which is eight, and then eight multiplied by two, 16. Then on the other side, we've got one over two. Um, and he's asking, how many times can you simplify it? So you simplify it until there's nothing else that will divide into it, um, that will divide into the top and the bottom. If there's nothing else, that divides into the top and the bottom. That means you've simplified it fully. So we're going to multiply this half by, uh, oh, sorry, oh, did, did the arrow the wrong thing? We're going to multiply it by, oh, I already multiplied the half. I was wondering what's going on there. So we are going to multiply this three over eight by two. So multiply the top and the bottom by two, which equals six over 16. And again, that gives us the same numbers at the bottom. So we've got 8 over 16 minus 6 over 16 equals 2 over 16. But once again, we can simplify. We can divide them both by 2. And dividing by 2 is some of the most common ways to simplify because it's so often it, it happens. And the answer will be 1 over 8. And I saw loads of people saying 1 over 8. Um, so 1 over 8 is the answer. Um. And Emma, you have a good question there. You say, what if they don't tell you to put it in its simplest form? So sometimes they don't tell you. And then if they don't tell you to put it in the simplest form, then then it doesn't matter if you simplify or not. Um, that, don't worry about it. But if they do tell you to put it in the simplest form, you have to do that. Um, so again, these numbers came from, we have our half, which is our first fraction. And we multiply it by the bottom of the second fraction. That's just the easiest way to do it. So you have your first fraction, which is a half, and you're multiplying it by the bottom of the second fraction. So one over two multiplied by eight on top and eight on bottom, and that gives you eight over 16. The second fraction, three over eight multiplied by two, because two is the bottom of the first fraction, and that equals six over 16. Final answer, one over eight. Super, okay. Okay, so now we've got this question here. And this is a trickier one because it's got three parts to it. So what I want you to do to start off is to break it up. So we're just going to look at the adding first of all. So take out, <laughs> Amber's saying, oh, Helen, she's scared by this sum. You'll get it, Amber, don't worry. So we've got one over two plus two over seven. So start off with this. 1 over 2 plus 2 over 7. Start off by just doing that part. And then with you, when you get your answer, take 13 over 14, sorry, 3 over 14 away from it. So start off by doing, um, start off by doing 1 half plus 2 over 7. And Samantha, you're saying you're not sure about how to do the subtraction. So the subtraction is done the exact same way as our addition. It's just where you need to get the same number on the bottom and you're going to take the top numbers away from each other. So if we have, we'll show you now in a second, but you get the same numbers at the bottom, the common denominator, and then you take the first number away from the second. So in this case, we're going to start off by breaking our sum into two separate parts. And we've got one over two plus two over seven. So start by that, and then whatever your answer is, take 3 over 14 away from it. Okay, so... We've got some different answers coming in this one. So just do the first part and then add in, and then subtract the 3 over 14.
Okay, so I'm going to have a look first at the half. So we've got 1 over 2. And I'm going to multiply it by 7. So I'm going to multiply it by 7. Um, and uh, we're going to multiply it by 7. So we've got 1 over 1 multiplied by 7 and 2 multiplied by 7. Again, we're multiplying it by 7 because 7 is the bottom of the other fraction. So 7 multiplied by 1 equals 7. And then 2 multiplied by 7 is 14. So we've got 7 over 14 from the first part. And the second part, 2 over 7, we're going to multiply it by 2. Because 2 is the bottom of the first fraction. That's where our 2 comes from. And that equals 4 over 14. So 7 over 14 plus 4 over 14 equals 11 over 14. Then we're going to do 11 over 14 minus 3 over 14. 11 minus 3. You can just take it out if you need to. 11 minus 3 equals 8. So we have 8 over 14. Now, just remember... um. Just remember that if you have 8 over 14, you can still simplify that. Um, so 8 over 14, you can divide um, you can divide the top and the bottom by 2. So 8 divided by 2 equals 4, and 14 divided by 2 equals 7. So our final answer, our simplified answer, equals 4 over 7. So if you didn't get that, just have a look now at this question. Just have another look again. So see how we broke it up into two different parts, first of all. Then we added the first two fractions, a half plus two over seven. And then when we got our answer, we took away the, the three over 14. And the three over 14, remember that's in the question at the start. But to make our lives easier, we ignore it at the start and then we come back to it at the end. Um, so 4 over 14, um, I'm sorry, 4 over 7 is the answer. Great stuff. Loads of people seem to have that one. Um, okay, so we will. Okay, so what we're going to do now, guys, is we are going to do a small little test. So in a second... Uh, it's going to be put into the chat. So the chat where you've been putting your answers, it's going to go in there and you're, it's going to be put in as a link. So you're going to click on the link and copy it and paste it into, inter into your internet browser, whether that's um, Microsoft, whether that's Google Chrome, anywhere. So you're going to paste it in there and then you're going to answer some questions. At the start of the test, you're just going to have to put in stuff like your name maybe your parent's name or your parent's email, something like that, just so we can send the results. So the link is in the chat now. So don't put anything else in the chat. Just look into the chat. TJ has put it in. So click on that, and then it's going to bring you to... Actually, I can show you as well, guys. I'll show everything uh, to make it easy. Mm -hmm. Two 